Uh, good afternoon. My name is Anuj and I'm an active researcher. I uh, recently completed my PhD in genetics and I'm an MSc in molecular biology and biotechnology as well as I've done my biotechnology uh, honors uh, BSc course. And I have a vast experience in teaching uh, students at both masters and uh, graduation level. And uh, I will be happy to solve uh, solve their queries, and uh, I can guide uh, all uh, our students for all kinds of examinations like uh, CSIR, DVD, as well as MSc entrance examinations like IT. So today we are going to uh, talk about visualizing molecules in the living cell. So uh, live cell imaging uh, because it's a very important topic, and we will find a lot of questions related to uh, this part of syllabus in all kinds of examinations. You will find uh, different kinds of questions which is, uh, which is basically applied. So it's very important to learn about all these techniques. So why live cell imaging is very important because this technique is less prone to experimental artifacts. And it's usually provide more reliable and relevant information compared to pixel microscopy. And what can be done using uh, live cell imaging? So uh, you can uh, examine the structure, various structural components of cell. You can study the dynamic processes such as cellular integrity, endocytosis, exocytosis, protein trafficking, signal transduction, as well as enzyme activity. You can uh, do the localization study of various molecules in terms of their transformation, interaction with other proteins, as well as response under various environmental tools. So the first thing is uh, to study any live cell imaging of part. You need a certain tool, which can be small molecule dyes. And you can label uh, all kinds of organelles, be it nucleus, be it mitochondria, be it cytoplasm, be it endoplasmic reticulum or lysosome. These are the two images which are labeled with uh, mitotracker and lysotracker respectively. So, and uh, this uh, blue color is the pseudo color for the DNA dye. So, you can see all the mitochondria here and here all the lysosomes which have been sent. Now, uh, the other part is the GFP tagging. So GFP is the green protein protein as the name suggests. And this is used to tag protein of interest in living cells and foreign organisms. So basically the structure is seven beta barrel and one alpha helix is passing in the center. And it has three amino acid residue, which is what as promo code that is the entire scene is like and you can generate multiple mutations in the coding region of this green and protein so that you will get a uh, you will get a various kind of fluorescent some molecules like yfp uh, cfp can fluorescent protein and other proteins and this is the image which is showing tobacco plant expressing high levels of GFP in which a mitochondrial protein is tagged with a GFP protein. And this red color is showing autofluorescence for the chloroplast. And the next is there are different markers to introduce a membrane impermeant uh, substance into the cell. Uh, there's uh, one, one of the techniques is glass microprocate, other is electroporation, other is type membrane bound vesicles, which is interacting with the plasma membrane, and the other technique is cold particles, which can uh, insert into the cell. And uh, these are the range, uh, which is uh, different so for the different percent source so in the visible spectrum. You can see the DAPI, CFP, GSP. And YFP for the rhodamine, Alexa, RFP, as well as the thymine 5. And, uh, and uh, you can use multiple probes also in the same cell. Like this is an example of cells in microsis where the single microtubules are uh, labeled with clean antibody. Centromeres are labeled with straight antibody. And the DNA are, is labeled with a type E, the dye. And uh, the other, which is the most recent one, is the quantum dot. So quantum dot is basically have a semiconductor core, which can be of uh, C, uh, C, uh, C, 
cadmium selenium or uh, zinc selenium and uh, then uh, it's a hydrophilic hydrophilic coating and after that uh, the surface of ligand is basically streptavidin or any antibody and you know, it's always excitation with a blue light source so the larger the dot longer the wavelength and uh, this is an example uh, of uh, example of uh, labeling with the quantum dot where microtubules are labeled with green and uh, nucleus is labeled with uh, uh, you know with the red dye so you can see after after uh, even after uh, 180 seconds the uh, labeling of uh, the nucleus is intact and this is just the opposite of what happens in the first phase where the microtubules are labeled with uh, and uh, or with with uh, with a red dye and the nucleus is labeled with a green dye and uh, this is just a uh, different different biological applications and their microscopy approaches which is used in the live cell imaging technique to study the cell shape cell migration and organelle kinetics you need a transmission microscopy bright field or dark field So for the protein co-localization, you need confocal or EB persons. For 3D imaging, you need confocal or spinning test. For 3D imaging of tissue or model organelles, you need multi-photon. Similarly, for the other kind of application, you need all different kind of microscopy and approaches. You can uh, go to the slide, and you will find this very relevant here. And uh, to study like different live imaging probes, are uh, the frozen probes. Two of uh, the two of them I already discussed in the previous slide. So frozen probe, frozen peptide, organic chlorophore, indicator probe, and quantum dots. And for doing all these live uh, cell imaging studies, uh, you have to uh, keep monitoring the various parameters, uh, which can be a short term as well as the long term. For the pH, for the short term, you can use the Hertz buffer. Longer term, you require a CO2 incubator. Temperature, you can use the stage warmers. As well as uh, for the longer term, you need objective lens warmers. Humidity can be open cell chambers as well as the tightly sealed cell cell chambers. For the oxygenation, you need large volume area volume of media. And for the long term in the study, media changes uh, during study last uh, is required. Osmolarity, you need sealed chamber as well as for the longer term study, you need enclosed system. And uh, uh, besides this, there are other radio isotopes also. You can see all the radio isotopes which are currently being used in study all the biological applications. And these are the different uh, radioactive forms of ATP. And it is used to uh, trace the metabolic pathway as well as uh, to understand the mechanism of enzymatic reactions. Uh, uh, also, to for the membrane receptor to study the membrane receptor and uh, ligand binding. And you will find, as I said earlier, you will find all these uh, parts relevant for your uh, exams, be it after your masters or be after your graduation. And uh, thank you to Urban Pro for giving me an opportunity to uh, give this a uh, small a small part of uh, part that I used to teach to my students. With this, thank you, and I will be happy to take.